Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your weekend of Friday, February 21st through Sunday, February 23rd of 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the weekend of the 21st to the, through the 23rd, it does not mean that this, this ha absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that is the message for you in that moment. Yes. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading. Okay. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. So before I get started, <clears throat> I want to mention that, um, if you haven't gotten a chance to check them out yet, I have started on the monthly readings for March and I'm doing them differently this time around. I'm doing them live and my whole reading structure is completely changing right now. Um, so I got three of them done yesterday, Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. Those are up and ready for your viewing pleasure at this moment. And then I'm going to be continuing with that. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get to uh, Gemini. Gemini would be next. I'm not sure I'll be able to get to Gemini today. Um, if I can't do it today, then I'm just going to start back up on Monday. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Look, look for those. Um, I am 100% open to any feedback that you guys have on the new format, the new structure, the live streams. I want to be going live more. I really like doing it that way. It was so much fun. So I'm definitely going to continue doing that, at least for this round, for this month. Um, so then, on top of all that, speaking of a new reading structure, as you can see, I don't have a pre-shuffle here, um, and I don't have the vice versa deck here, because I am excited to try my new reading structure for morning coffee. Now, I've been wanting to, do, to change it up for morning coffee for a while now. I was really getting bored of using the... Um, the vice versa deck. It served us really well. We had a really great run with it, but I had been feeling recently that um, it was time to change it up. And my reading structure is changing to the form of moving more towards an oracle base beginning to help us get the storyline going and then clarifying with the tarot. And then of course, I'm going to be closing with um, extra, I guess we could call it oracle guidance from some more of the in-depth Oracle decks, but what I have here are some decks that don't require you to really go into the book to understand what's going on. At least from my point of view, I, it doesn't like I can read it intuitively and start picking up on the storyline. And so I've invested in a number of new decks, you guys. Like I went a little bit crazy <laughs> and I bought all kinds of decks, but I'm really happy about it. So um, I'm going to do that today and I'm super, super excited about it. Yeah. Um, I am drinking coffee today out of my, I may be a bad influence, but damn, I'm fun mug. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but yeah, I'm at coffee today. Because I just decided I wanted coffee this morning instead of starting with tea. So there's that. Yes. All right, guys. So let's just, let's get straight into it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, February 21st through Sunday, February 23rd of 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids. So what I want to do is I want to start with the Energy Oracle. And let's see if we can get a little bit of a story here going here, yeah? Five shuffles, they say. All right, so one. Two. I even changed my the way I'm even changing the way I label myself or the what I call myself I changed it on Instagram last night this is three from a tarot and oracle card reader to just an oracle because that's kind of who I am I'm an oracle and I love it <laughs> okay four 
for the collective here, spirit. What's going on with the collective today? That's five. All right. So what's the story? What's the... Ooh, okay. Well, there we go. We have some already. Let me just... Aha. Okay. So we have one card that's fallen out face up and it's the door to personal healing and happiness. And you know what? It's crazy. I mean, I say this all the time, but, um, you know, I'm a reader, but I am part of this collective. And this is literally, this is, this is the energy that I feel myself in right now. Door to, door to, door, <laughs> door to personal healing and happiness. Um, and it's really on a very deep, very deep level here we have yin and yang in reverse we also have the door to romance in, in reverse oh man <laughs> oh man okay shit what else do you want to tell us about this spirit like what's what else for the collective today attachment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right kids yeah we're gonna stop there overall energy shit man Caring connections. I mean, like, damn spirit. How are you going to just, like, throw my whole life out there for the world to see? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Okay. So, I'm not going to lie, you guys. We've got a little bit of a divine counterpart situation going on here with yin and yang. Um, oh, actually, I don't have... Okay, I don't have the book. I kind of would want to read this book, uh, read the book and see what is in what we have going on for yin and yang, what it would say. Um, but ultimately, I'm, I'm just going to read it intuitively. Spirit's like, whatever, Eric, you don't need the book. Just read it. Call it like you see it. Okay, so I'm going to call it like I see it. And what I see is something that's going on in the Twin Flame Collective. Um, and if you're not a part of the, or the Twin Flame Collective, you're not on a Twin Flame journey, you don't resonate with the Twin Flame journey, then this probably is not a message for you. However, I would encourage you to maybe listen along um, because there can be some things that you can glean from this. So then, okay, so let's, let's take it, let's the, take the label of Twin Flame or Divine Counterpart out there, out of there. And let's just talk about the, the union between opposites, the, the, the balance between positive and negative, uh, masculine and feminine, okay? Look at it from that point of view. You don't have to look at it from, you know, a, a, a twin flame point of view. But something that's going on in the twin flame collective actually is, um, and this has been going on for a while, and I actually have a channeling that I wrote down um, last night from the twin flame collective that I want to share with you guys, but I'm going to do that with um, this next round of twin flame readings that I'm going to do probably sometime next week. Um, and we decided yesterday during happy hour or last night during happy hour, um, which was, which ended up just being like a live chat. And I answered some questions and I answered some personal questions and blah, blah, blah. And we just hung out. So if you want to, Oh, and I did a collective energy pool. Um, I'm going to, uh, you guys should watch that there. I'm putting a tag or a card right up here in the top right of your screen. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out because it actually was a, um, a collective energy reading, um, that I did there instead of doing it on Instagram. Yesterday was a whole different thing, but it was fun. It was really fun. It was a great session. Go ahead and check it out. But, um, we decided during that session yesterday, and if you watch it, you will see this, that I want the next round of twin flame readings I'm going to do is going to be messages from the divine masculine collective and messages from the divine feminine collective, rather than doing another mirror reading this time. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to do anyway, in regards to, especially in regards to what's been going on in the collective lately, but what's been going on in the, in the collective lately is that the feminine is really pulling away now. Like it's, and it's something that, that hit me last month right after i felt this massive resurgence of twin of like the twin flame energy and twin flame collective that started back in this uh, it's, yeah it really kicked off in december um but it was a situation in which i fell back into that le that energy and it like it I fell pretty hard into it. Um, thankfully, though, when I fell into the energy, I had a different perspective. And so that allowed me to work through it and get to the point that I'm at now. But the point that I'm at now is there is no need or desire for romance um, with, it, with, with the twin. Um, 
it's it's and, and what I'm picking up for the collective here is that there is um, collectively whether you're on a twin flame journey or not between the masculine and the feminine I will say there is like the door to romance is I guess I want to say it's closed um, or it's closing or at least it's blocked um, and there is an energy of bringing any sort of attachment to completion um, you have the world here and you have attachment the world also speaks to um, in this deck at least it speaks to you know possibilities and and looking at the bigger picture and seeing how things could work out in other ways um, it's reminding me of a card i think it might be in this deck of adjacent possibilities okay um but what i feel like here is happening for the collective whether you're on a twin flame journey or this is just you know between soulmates counterparts between the masculine and the feminine there is a level of detachment that is really really sinking in here you do have door to personal healing and happiness All, whatever is whatever is blocking this romance between you and your divine counterpart or you and your 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 soulmate your partner whatnot whatever it all has to do with bringing attachment to a close um and <clears throat> opening your eyes and your sights to on the horizon towards truly caring connections okay what's what's going on within the feminine collective right now is re rejecting any sort of love offer or commitment or relationship or whatnot or even like like absolutely vehemently rejecting any sort of situationship for in favor of a truly caring connection okay there's an energy of questioning things and so it may not be so extreme here in terms of like you're not speaking to your counterpart or your partner or whatnot whatever but you could be questioning the union between the two of you um, is there romance is there I mean it doesn't necessarily have to be romance but is there at least love here okay um, there th With the world and attachment it's almost as if there's like a final layer of attachment energies that are being scrubbed from the collective right now and it's all in in terms of you know the, the, the door the, the the doorway that you have to cross through in terms of personal healing and happiness and and especially for the twins here it's like well what's actually going to make me happy No, like 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 really though what's actually going to make me happy is being with my twin going to make me happy is being with my my divine counterpart or this soulmate that i you know maybe i've been pining after for a while or whatnot whatever is that going to make me happy or is it not is it i mean is it really a caring connection that's the big question here whatever whatever collectively whatever questions you may be having about your relationship it's in terms of whether it's actually a caring connection or not and there's a level uh, and especially for like the feminine around here the the attachment to a specific outcome or a specific person is fading either is either fading away or is gone because what she truly wants and this is energy not gender but what the feminine truly wants is a caring connection and it doesn't have to be with the twin if it doesn't serve the highest good if it's not if it if it requires you to 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 accept less than what you know you're you're worthy of and in other words what spirit is also saying in they're saying it this way like if it, if it requires that you lower yourself or lower your vibration in any way just to have this connection with your twin or just to have this romance then no thank you <laughs> no that door is closed and it's closed not because we hate not because we resent not because we're angry but we're done with the attachment the attachment isn't getting us anywhere the effort that we're putting into it is not getting us anywhere because it is not a caring connection at least not at this point there's still quite a bit of toxicity that needs to that that's running rampant 
and that needs to be healed. And part of the situation, especially for the feminine, I can't believe, Spirit, I can't believe you're having me talk about this now. <laughs> I wanted to do a whole reading on this for the collective. And I guess we'll get into deeper into the, for the Twin Flame readings, but... Oh shit, I lost what I was going to say. Um, but the, but but this, this is really the point, though. And that's this door to personal healing and happiness that you're crossing through. And it doesn't even have to be just the feminine here. It could, I just picked up on the fact that there could be some masculines out here that are, that are maybe like, you know, ahead of their feminine or more awakened to the process than their feminine. You could be dealing with this as well. You could be feeling the dissolution of this, uh, of this attachment. Okay. All right. I want to, let's get some clarity here. I want to talk about the world and attachment. I want to see what are the energies. Now I'm moving to the sacred destiny oracle here. Um, I, I, yeah, I want to look, I want to look a little bit, actually, yeah, go up here first. Okay. I want to look here. We're going to look at door to romance in reverse and yin yang in reverse. And I just want to see what are some key words, some energetic points of discussion here. What can you tell us about door to romance and yin and yang, please, spirit? All of these. Okay. Yeah. Illumination. Ill guys. Oh, guys. Oh. <laughs> Overall energy is gateway. Okay. Yeah, you're out of you are definitely at a gateway and you're at this gateway and you're able to take advantage of the opportunity that you have because of the illumination that you found or that you're finding. Okay. This is take all of them. Good God. Okay. All right. Well, cool. First card up, we have forgiveness. Then we have voyage, then change, inner peace, <laughs> flow and new beginnings. Wow, this is great. I mean, I'm, you guys, I'm really loving this new reading structure. This is insane, but okay. Um, sorry, and my camera is not focusing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so look, check it out, guys. The, I, I really want to drive this point home that just because there is a disconnection, well, okay, there is a disconnection in a sense between um, twin flames, divine counterparts, or maybe you and just your soulmate, what not, whatever. Okay, fine. It doesn't matter. That's just the fucking labels. But if you're, if you're resonating with this and you're resonating with it, regardless of the label. Okay. But what's happening here, this, this door to romance between these counterparts, um, is either closed or blocked. Some, I, I will go ahead and say, oh my God, I just recognized that. Look, that's 22 and 23. Very, I'm sorry, 22 and 33. <laughs> I love that master numbers okay anyway um i will i will i will admit there are some in this collective and it does feel like it's strongly feminine even though it's mostly the feminine energies that are watching these readings it could be some of the masculines out there but there are some people out there that have consciously closed or blocked or locked this door between themselves and their counterpart but it is not something that's done out of malice or at least hopefully it's not out of malice for the most part i will say about 80 percent of us at this point it's like look i don't hate you in any way but this romance cannot work between us so there is uh, because of the illusion right not the illusion the illumination well yeah it was there was an illusion there is illusion everywhere and okay that's fine but it's mainly because of the illumination but hello forgiveness okay Forgiveness of the person that, that, you know, this, you have this connection or this relationship with forgiveness of yourself. Forgiveness of yourself is actually the, uh, something, a point that really wants to come through for the collective here. You must forgive yourselves for anything. And it's really an, an energy. This is mainly, I guess, for the feminine here, but it's really like, how could I have let myself sink so deeply into this? I question, I went through that. I had a moment like that early this morning it's like am i am i crazy like what the hell is going on why why am i so caught up in this like this this literally makes no logical sense but i have to forgive myself and forgiveness is more for you than for them so even in forgiving yourself you got to forgive them too 
okay because they're human beings just like we are and this i mean who's they i don't know whomever this would resonate for in your life but this other person that you're connected to i'm hearing your divine counterpart is a human being living their own life too and to be quite honest whatever is going on in the journey for you that's what you need to be experiencing okay but you also have voyage and change so what I'm getting with this here in terms of door to romance and yin yang in, to a close, there is literally, this is almost like a catch you on the flip side. Look, I love you. I forgive you for whatever happened between us. No matter whatever happens, whatever continues to happen between us, I still love you. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go on a voyage. I'm going to go somewhere else. Voyage and change. I'm just, it's time for a change. It's time for something new. And you want to know why? Because I'm following the flow of my inner peace. Because I'm ready for a new beginning. There you go. So this is kind of an exercise in walking your talk. So mainly for the feminine here, okay? So if you say, oh, I want love, I want commitment, I want marriage, I want reciprocity, I want all that stuff, then that means that you have to not accept it from anything or anyone if it's not, not accept anything from anything or anyone if it does not line up with that. You're walking your talk. Even if that is your twin, your divine counterpart, this soulmate that you've been with for X amount of years, it's like, no, this is actually not providing me with what I know I, I'm worthy of and what I know what I want. So I can't accept that from you or anyone else. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my aunt, my uncle, my best friend, my, my dying grandmother, my, my, uh, my twin flame. Like, no. Why? Because you're choosing yourself. And thus you're moving towards through this gateway that I'm going to go ahead and say is going to give you everything that you're looking for because you're walking through this door to personal healing and happiness. It's about being happy. Not being with someone because you have this massive karmic, uh, karmic tie, sure, okay, or you have this ridiculous soul contract with this person. No. Healing and happiness. That is the point. Let's look at this card. I might, I might title the reading that. Healing and happiness. That's the point here. So what can you tell us about this door to personal healing and happiness spirit? Oh, shit. This, you guys, happiness, I told you, happiness is at the bottom of the deck. Happiness. We are no longer standing still. And that was part of the channeling that I got with the collective. It's like, we're not, I'm not standing, I, I'm tired of waiting. Let's go. I've got things to do. I have got shit to do, hunty. I'm not standing still any longer. I refuse to stand still and just wait for you Oh shit. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, I just heard I ref I refuse to stand still and wait for you to show your whole ass again. There are some people that are really fed up here, guys. But remember your forgiveness here, please. Remember the forgiveness, okay? No one's telling you not to be fed up. You have every right to be fed up, I'm pretty sure, but forgiveness. But this what is this door to personal healing and happiness? Well, first of all, it's happiness at the bottom of the deck. No longer standing still with standstill in reverse. And oh, by the way, it's also openness and love. For whomever I'm channeling this for, whether you're masculine or feminine, you have opened yourself to love. You have opened yourself to true caring connections. And quite frankly, you should be proud of yourself. It's like you've passed a test. And that test was, are you going to honor yourself? Are you going to choose yourself? Are you going to choose love? Or are you going to choose the devil energy? <gasps> the devil energy. 
remember how the devil energy was coming out like all last week and i was feeling i was feeling this energy of this like why do i have to be connected to this person there it is right there i mean you're still you're probably most likely you're still connected to them energetically okay that's fine but you still have a choice between obligation because they're your twin flame or you can be open to love. You can choose love. You can choose to go where the love is flowing. You can choose happiness. You can choose caring connections. Because that's what you're worthy of, a truly caring connection. Okay. So next, I'm going to, I want to talk about the world and attachment here, but I'm actually going to use the tarot for that. One last shuffle here. All right, kids. So spirit, what do you want to tell us? What do we, what should we, what can we talk about here with the world and attachment? What is this? Hmm. Wow. Six of cups. Oh shit. The six of cups, the five of swords, the emperor and the queen of wands overall energy of the four of wands well that's interesting the four of wands is speaking to union yes but it's speaking to inner union finding the inner union within yourself and allowing that to open you up to the possibilities which are endless i'm hearing we have the queen of wands the emperor the Six of Cups and the Five of Swords. The Six of Cups and the Five of Swords is this energy of, yeah, I know we're soulmates and all that. And I, I know like technically everybody says that we're, we're meant to be together. But you know what? Damn it. That shit is toxic. And to hold myself in an energy of saying I only can be with this one person because they're quote unquote my twin flame or whatever, whomever this person is to you. I can only be with this person because we've been to we've been together for so long or we're staying together for the kids or blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. That's bullshit. It's destructive. At least this whatever whatever situation I'm picking up on here for you is destructive. It's self defeat defeating. It's a lose lose situation. One person is in a low vibration and is continually compromising themselves while the other person feels like they have to be with you. And so they lay lower their vibration and then compromise your, themselves. And then it's just a vicious, big old vicious cycle. So instead, we're putting down the fight. We're walking away. We're releasing the attachment. And we are attracting the true emperor, the true masculine. Queen of Wands, the emperor. Now, other the other way the other way that I'm seeing this is, you have the feminine that's in her Queen of Wands energy, and then you have the masculine counterpart that's in this super controlling narcissistic Emperor energy, and the Queen of Wands is like, <laughs> no more, buddy. Then we also have the Two of Pentacles. Balance. Okay, the Two of Pentacles coupled with the Queen of Wands and the Emperor is like, all right, well, look. I do want to attract a divine partner. I do want to align with the divine masculine, but I'm going to align with a divine masculine individual or energy that is balanced and reciprocal. That, that harmonizes with my life, says the feminine. All because she's found this sense of inner union, four of wands, and recognizes that all she really needs to choose is her own self. And then anything else will fall in line for her or him. We're talking energy, not gender. Wow.
Wowie wow wow. I want to get some advice here. Um, bear with me. I'm not sure how I want to do that. Moonology or or the secret language of light. We're going to go with the secret language of Hold on. Cuz moon oh, sorry guys, bear with me. I'm in a really indecisive mode right now. Uh okay, moonology. We're going to go with moonology instead. All right. So some advice here. Last shuffle. Here we go. So what advice do we have from the Moonology deck here? Please spare from for this reading. What advice do you have for us here, Spirit? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Overall energy. Expect powerful change. Okay. You see that? Okay. Now look at this. Surrender to the divine. The energy is gaining momentum. And this is what we're doing here. We're surrendering to the divine. And if you want to say we're surrendering, we're surrendering to the divine within us, we're surrendering to what the divine holds for us that we know we are worthy of. Because ultimately the divine has all these blessings for us. And many of us have been blocking those blessings, blocking those caring connections because of our attachment to this one person or to this same scenario. But instead, we're surrendering now, surrendering to our higher selves, surrendering to our hearts, surrendering to the divine, surrendering so that we can allow for the divine to bring us what it is we truly desire. The energy is, in fact, gaining momentum. I want to talk about that, actually. What can you tell us? about the energy gaining momentum i mean and then with the expect powerful change at the at the bottom of the deck are you kidding me now i'm not gonna lie you guys i do feel like the more we detach from these individuals that we you know are, we are under the impression or under the understanding are our twin flames or our divine counterpart our soulmate whatnot whatever the more we detach, and I feel like that's what this is saying, the more we detach from these individuals, the more the energy, the momentum between the counterparts picks up. Because then that influences the counterpart to go through more healing. The more you detach from them, the more they are left with their own selves, and therefore the more they have to deal with their own selves, right? Okay, but also what's coming through with this energy is gaining momentum is the fact that whatever is new that's coming into your life that's gaining momentum as well that's picking up as well that could very well be a brand new relationship some a, a brand new caring connection but what else can you tell us about the energy is gaining momentum please spirit Okay, we have the Five of Pentacles with the Two of Swords, but then we also have the Nine of Swords that's come out, and that's in reverse, and we have Justice at the bottom of the deck. There was an energy within the collective of feeling, well, first of all, being left out in the cold, like straight up, straight up being left out in the cold by like your twin or your divine counterpart or maybe this if this is maybe like a job or a business or something like that whatever whatever it was for you there was an energy of straight up being left out in the cold but there was also an energy of not feeling like you're worthy enough but on top of that there was denial this is my twin 
this person loves me, or at least that's what my, my intuition tells me. That's what my guides tell me. There's no way they could leave me out in the cold like this. There's no way that they could reject me like this. I must, I, I must be seeing things. I must be reading the situation wrong. There's an energy of even doubting your intuition, even though your intuition may be telling you one thing and then turning around and saying, but look, you got to leave this person alone or you got to disconnect. You got to separate from this. It's like, no, no, I can't abandon this person. You actually, by you recognizing, by you coming out of this nine of swords energy, this fear and all that, you are actively choosing yourself and therefore not abandoning yourself. By choosing you, you're not abandoning anyone, especially if this is your twin flame because they are you, right? So if you choose to honor yourself, then you're choosing to honor them too, even though they're making a different choice in the 3D. And then are gonna turn around and, and, and say that you're abandoning them. No, no, honey, you're abandoning yourself. And I am about to teach you just how badly you're doing that. And I'm not trying to sit here and be on my soapbox or, or be all righteous and whatnot, whatever. No, I'm literally just going to choose myself and walk away from this scenario. No more denial. No more fear, no more anxiety, no more feelings of lack or unworthiness. No, 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 honey. And thus, the energy is gaining momentum. Wowie, wow, wow, you guys. This, this, liter this situation can literally apply to anything. It absolutely can apply to business because you could be looking for a job in which it is actually a caring connection, an employer that actually cares about their, their, their employees and the business and even their customers. Justice is being served here by letting go and allowing this mo energy to gain momentum. Wow. That is powerful. Okay. So I'm going to get our closing oracle guidance. I'm going to get it from the Gaia Oracle again today. I'm really loving this format. So you guys, please let me know what you think of it. Your feedback is, ooh, is greatly appreciated. Okay, just one last shuffle. And then we'll see what your oracle guidance is for this weekend's reading. Here we go. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. There it is. Oh, okay. We have card number 27, Enchanted Forest, Mystery, magic excitement so what i'm getting with this intuitively is that we are really crossing into an energy of the unknown um it's very much an energy of we're like walking into the wilderness the wild magical crazy enchanted forest where literally anything can happen there's a bit of fear okay there's a bit of apprehension because it's like i i have no idea what i'm getting myself into i have no it's very much it, it, it almost feels like like an Alice in Wonderland type of energy where she's, you know, she's exploring Wonderland. It's giving me, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Alice in Wonderland. I'm seeing Little Red Riding Hood where like you're walking through the woods and, you know, you there could be this wolf that's trying to, you know, but it's an enchanted forest. So there's illusions, there's confusion, there's magic, there's mystery. Anything can happen. But I feel like we're walking into this protected. So there really isn't a reason to fear, okay? Let's see what this says. <clears throat> One minute, life seems rather mundane and boring. Then all of a sudden, someone or something sweeps into your world like a breath of fresh air. All of a sudden, you feel as though you are a, on a magical mystery tour with a renewed sense of passion and excitement for life. Gee, that sure sounds like the Twin Flame journey, doesn't it? Yikes. And it doesn't matter that you have no real idea where this is all leading you. In fact, not knowing only creates more excitement. Life is now full of romance and seemingly endless creative possibilities. Embrace all that comes your way. 
enjoy the journey, and don't be in a hurry to settle things down or draw conclusions. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that again. Um, embrace all that comes your way, enjoy the journey, and don't be in a hurry to settle things down or draw conclusions. So that could very well mean don't necessarily sit here and say, oh no, it's over 100% with this person. Again, Enchanted Forest, anything can happen. It's about the journey, not the destination. But also, release that attachment 100%. Like, get that out of there. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the journey and don't be in a hurry to settle down or draw conclusions. Allow things to unfold in their own way and time. What unravels will bring you lasting joy and a deep sense of fulfillment. Your affirmation here is, I am open to new ideas and adventures. Life is full of endless creative possibility. I embrace each opportunity that comes my way. I love the magic and mystery of life. I trust my heart. I believe in love. Let's say that again. I am open to new ideas and adventures. Life is full of endless creative possibility. I embrace each opportunity that comes my way. I love the magic and mystery of life. I trust my heart. I believe in love. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I ho really, really hope this was helpful for you. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I doubt I'm going to be able to get to the Gemini reading for March today. Um, if I do, awesome. If not, that's okay. I'll just start back up on Monday. Um, I am going to be doing Twin Flame readings next week, messages from the Divine Feminine, and then messages from the Divine Masculine. Like I want to channel the, the Feminine and Masculine collectives individually and just allow them to speak through me. Okay, so look out for that. That's coming up next week. Um, and next week should be a pretty normal week. Uh, happy hour most likely will be on Wednesday. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm open for personal readings if you guys are interested. But with that said, I hope you guys have an absolute fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>